Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to talk about a new replenishment method called warehouse slotting. We'll take a look at the setup and the execution of that when we get right back. Warehouse slotting is a pretty new feature. It came out in March of 2020. And the scenario I'm going to use it under is I've got, I'm working with a client that has multiple single line orders. So they've got hundreds of orders that have single lines on them. And basically they don't want to go to the picking shelf and pick five of each of them. They want to pull a pallet down for bulk and move it to an area that they can actually pick from. So what we're going to use for this is slotting. So slotting allows you to do exactly that. It allows you to accumulate demand on orders that haven't even been released yet. It's just you have to create demand in the system via a sales order and you can create replenishment work based on that sales order. So if I've got an item that where the pallet is 10 and I've got 10 orders with 10 lines on them for one each, I can, instead of going to the picking area and picking one, I can go and replenish that down to a, you know, maybe like a staging location sort of, and have them pick the entire orders from that one location, okay? So that's what we're gonna to attempt to do today. I'm gonna to kind of walk you through and show you how to set up the template and we'll execute some work. So let's take a look at the setup of this first. This is a newer feature, so I did have to turn this on on feature management, so this became generally available on March 27th of 2020. So if I go to my dashboard and then go down to feature management um, here, let me, I'm just going to select all, and then if I search for warehouse, this is the feature that I've turned on is the warehouse slotting feature. Okay. So when you turn that on, you get a couple of items get added to the menu. So if I go into warehouse management, then I go underneath setup, then replenishment. So I get slotting templates and slotting unit of measure tiers. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at the slotting unit of measure tiers. And I've set one up that's box each and pallet. So this just determines what unit measures are valid. Um, so uh, in this case, I want box eaches and pallets, okay? Then the next thing we're gonna go do is we're gonna to go to our slotting templates. And so I'm gonna use Warehouse 61 today. So I've created a slotting template called 61, Description 61, you would name these whatever you want. You have the demand type, which is a sales order. That's the only type you can choose at the moment. You can, this does not work on transfer orders at the moment. And then your demand strategy, you have ordered, reserved, or released. I'm gonna use ordered. Uh, again, my warehouse today is going to be 61, and then this is going to be checked yes, which is the allow wave demand to use unreserved quantities. So what this is going to do for us is we're going to generate these uh, replenishments first and then release orders to the warehouse. So if you have wave demand replenishment uh, and this is set to yes, instead of generating new replenishment orders, it will use the quantities that are on these replenishments first before it generates any new ones. Okay. So then if we go down to the line details here, I've set one up for uh, fixed locations. We're not gonna be using fixed locations today. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, skip that one for right now, but it's basically the same setup as the other, which is the non-fixed locations. Um, so what I would have here is other, minimum quantity is one, maximum quantity is a million. I'm not specifying any units for this one. Uh, the unit of measure tiers, like I said, it, it uh, determines what units are valid. And then you have uh, assigning uh, slot criteria. So it's going to be either assume empty or consider quantity. So what this is going to do is if you have it set to assume empty, it assumes that all locations in the picking area are empty. So it doesn't check the locations for inventory, right? And then if you select consider quantity, it's going to check the uh, locations in the picking area to see if they contain inventory. And this comes into, into play if you're going to use this allow let up. Allow let up is going to uh, take inventory out of the locations. It'll create, actually create movement work to pull it out of the locations for you. Okay. And then one thing I did do is I set up a specific uh, location directive for this uh, and assigned it to some location directives called slotting, so I've just specified that directive code here. That just makes it more efficient. And then I'm not specifying an overflow uh, location. Um, so basically this is a location that it, inventory we put into if the quantity fails to find a location, right? So it just gives you an overflow location. I'm not gonna specify that here. 
And then this, like I said, this line is for fixed and non-fixed locations. So let's take a look at the queries next. Uh, so on the second line here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit query. And basically what I wanna do is when this runs, I want all of the replenishments to find a location with a location profile pick six. So this could, you could pull things down to a specific zone. I'm just using a location directive to do, um, a location profile to do this. Or you could uh, specify a, a, a single location or just whatever you want your, your criteria to be to where you want to uh, send these replenishments to, okay? One other important detail is the edit query here. So on this one, what I've done is I've set up some waves so that when I release orders to the waves, the waves don't actually create the work yet. Um, they just uh, basically hold the work and I've got a specific wave uh, attribute set up on some orders that's called UPS. It's I've got specified here what the wave status created and this is by default warehouse 61. One thing to note is when you run this, it doesn't take in consideration work that's already out there. So if you run this three times, it's gonna generate work every single time. It doesn't really look at what work is already out there. It just looks at the demand and creates work for that demand. So in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm only running this one time for a wave. So you may wanna specify loads in here. If you've got a specific load you wanna create this for, you just want some sort of limiting factor here. So my plan on this one is to have waves that are in a created status and then prior to releasing the waves, I would run this, release the waves, and then it, and then as new orders are released to warehouse, they'll get added to a new wave, okay? So that's just kind of the way I'm gonna to use to, to limit these orders here, all right? All right, so what you're gonna see here in just a minute is I'm gonna show you the wave that I created off of two sales orders. So one thing I wanna to explain to you is that you don't actually have to release the sales orders to warehouse. So I did release them to create the wave, the work hasn't been generated, but I can just add items to the uh, sales order to get this to work. I don't actually have to do any waving of them or anything else or releasing of, of the um, items, which makes this kind of nice. But for my example here, I'm gonna go ahead and wave these items out and I've created the wave in such a manner where it doesn't process or doesn't actually release and create work to the warehouse. So it's just gonna be kind of in a created state there, okay? So let's take a look at an example of how this works next. Now let's take a look and see how to actually run the slotting replenishment. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you the example I have set up. So I'm gonna be underneath warehouse management and I'm gonna go underneath outbound waves, shipment waves, and then let's take a look at all waves here. All right, so the, I've created a, uh, a wave here. So let's go and in, go into this one right here a wave that's been created and I've got two sales orders on it. Now this wave has not been released to the warehouse or it's been released, but it hasn't generated work, okay? So I've got two sales orders attached to it. So 1085 here, if we open this one up. And we take a look, we've got two items on here, an L0101 for 20 eaches and then a T0100 for eight, okay? And then we'll close that and we'll take a look at the other one. So we open this one up. On this one, we have uh, one pallet of the T0100, okay? Now I've gone ahead and generated and released these to waves. You actually don't have to do that. You don't have to release anything at all. This is gonna look at whatever demand you specify in the, uh, in the query on the actual slotting template, okay? So to run this, there's a couple ways of running this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first way, which is to go back underneath warehouse management, go under setup, and then go to replenishment and then slotting templates. And you just wanna make sure you have your template uh, highlighted and then you can click the generate demand button. And then once you generate demand, you can look at the demand that was created. So if I come here to the slotting demand, it'll tell me, okay, I've got a demand for this L0101 for a pallet. And you remember that was their 20 each is on our sales order. And then for the T0100, I've got a demand for 10. I've got another sales order out there. I think I showed you the eight sales order, but I've got another some more demand out there somewhere. And then I've got demand for T0100 for a pallet, okay? So that just kind of shows you the demand that's out there. And then so we can locate the demand here. So it'll generate the slotting plan. And then if we go and take a look at the slotting plan, it's gonna tell us to take, to pick up a pallet of the L0101 and take it to this location. That's what these are telling us. Then it's gonna say take 10 of these T0100s 
and take it to that location, and then uh, a pallet of our T01 and take it to this location. So if you remember from our slotting template, this is our pick uh, 06 location profile is where these why it's picking these locations. Okay. So once that's done, uh, you can go ahead and run the replenishment. So we go and click Run Replenishment. So it created uh, three work headers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the work that was created underneath that. So let's go to Warehouse Management, go to All Work. And these are the three work uh, items that it's created. So if we're going to use MF121 here. So this is for our L0101 palette. And if we could look at this one, this is for our T0100 palette, or for 10. And then for our uh, T0100, here's our uh, one palette. Okay, so I've obviously got something wrong with my location directive because it's not specifying a picked location directive. I can, that's just something in my local direct, location directives that I have uh, not correct. Uh, so one thing, what a more word of warning I will will share, share with you is that if I run this again, it's going to generate three more. If I run it again, it's going to generate three more. So it doesn't take a look at what's actually out there as far as work. It's only going to look at the demand. That's why it's pretty important on the query for the template to specify exactly what you want it to run off of. You know, that could be a load or a wave. You know, just make sure you have your query set up correctly when you run this because it's going to generate more work. So I'm actually going to demonstrate that by, I'm not going to delete these out and leave these in here. And the other way that you can run it, there is a job you can use to run it. So let's go underneath uh, replenishment. And then we're gonna, there's this run slotting item here. We're going to click on run slotting. And you can have you can run this all three ways. So I've got all, all three checked to generate demand, locate demand, and create replenishment work all at the same time. You're going to specify your slotting template. So notice there's no criteria in this or just to run your run in the background. So make sure that you have your your query like what what you want there otherwise it, it'll it's going to duplicate things so i'm going to run this just to show you that it will duplicate the work i'll go ahead and hit okay and that is assuming i've got enough inventory um, there for this so it's actually created some work now and if we go back into all work see it's created additional work there for us okay so just again a word of caution that it is it doesn't look at work that's already been generated make sure that you uh that you have your queries set correctly. Okay, so I hope you like this example of uh, warehouse slotting. Apologize, some of my location directives weren't set up correctly, so I was getting blanks in there, but I don't think it really affected um, how you're seeing this work. So again, apologize, I normally try and make that a little bit better, but um, but that didn't work for me this time. Okay, but hope, hopefully you're able to see the, the general process on this, okay? So if you did like the video, please, Go ahead and like it, give it a thumbs up. That just helps the distribution of the video. And you know, warehouse slotting can be a pretty powerful feature because it just you don't have to release anything. You can look at demand that's out there. You can go ahead and replenish before um, before you actually release the work. Okay. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. That also helps the distribution of my videos, and it also helps you. Uh, see when I post a new video. I do post videos about once to twice a week, so on some different piece of dynamics content, so I encourage you to subscribe as well, okay? So again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.